So the show's on Lifetime right now in the States, yes, but it's yes. coming to Canada. Tell us a little bit about the series. Set the ground for us. The ground for you. It's a, um, a sci-fi drama about a PI who's recently lost her job at the police station as a police officer who inadvertently teams up with a vampire chasing the same criminal, mass murderer, uh, serial killer, who people rumor to be a vampire, in which I'm a vampire myself, so. Okay, so now uh, it's based on a series of books called uh, Blood, was it Blood Bath? Blood, what's the book? No, The Blood Books. The Blood Books, okay, and so now how closely does it follow those books? Uh, fairly closely. Uh, Tanya Huff was the author of those. Um, she was on set a lot and she really helped us, you know, get, get our first scripts together and she even wrote one herself. Um, fantastic woman and, you know, she, she had done three books and we did 22 episodes. And um, so there's a lot of stories outside her, her, her written books and um, done by a fantastic, you know, creative team of writers that we had on set all the time. So you're talking about being a vampire and how does one go about, how does one, how do you go about becoming a vampire? What, what's, what's your process? What's your actor technique in that? <laughs> well, um, it's kind of cool because um, the, the clothes were very fitting and, um, you know, you think is in slim fitting or is it appropriate for, as an appropriate for the character? Yes. <laughs> um, you showed off my physique and that's how I became a vampire. <laughs> that's how I got in character. They threw me in some spandex. It was great. No, there was no spandex. No spandex. What kind of show is this? <laughs> And, uh, no, you know, you put the fangs in, and uh, they had me in contacts, um, yeah. full black contacts that filled my entire eye. Um, and, you know, you, you get into it, and you, you rehearse a few times, and you really start to feel it. And after the first few episodes, it was very automatic. You know, once you walk on set, you kind of leave everything else behind, and you're walking, talking Henry Fitzroy. This is kind of freaky how the wind's coming. Also, we started talking about you and your vampire I stuff, know. and also like, Whoa! Um, You're talking about the, the contacts. And the eyes. Tell me about that. Like, do, do those things hurt? I can only imagine. Like, what, how long is the shoot day? Like, 12 hours, right? You were in yeah. those, like, at the end yeah. of the day? You just want to just kill yourself? Yeah, we're lucky if we had a 12-hour shoot day. Oh. <laughs> but, um... What do you mean? Like, they were longer, usually? They, they were longer, yeah. Oh. They, were, they were generally, they were, a lot, they were longer. But, um, the end of the season, we, we really had our stuff together, and we were bang, banging everything out, and yeah. everything was fantastic. But, um... I mean, I'd have the contacts on for, you know, maybe an hour or so at a time, you know, rolling through a couple scenes, and, you know, if we had a long turnaround or a lighting setup, I'd pop them out, and my scene was always there to take them off me and, you know, make sure I was comfortable and there was nothing in my eye or anything like that, so they were taking care of me well, yeah. yeah. Uh, the hair, so, like, is that your natural look, or did you have to grow that out to be, like, very <laughs> vampire Lestat? Uh, Lestat. Oh, God, have I heard that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Dude, listen, we're going to do a side-by-side right now. Um, I didn't just make that up. <laughs> um, the hair's been long since I was little, man. Oh, I mean, okay. like, t probably 13, 14, 15 years old. Yeah. I'm dying for an opportunity to shave it, so. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. For one of your serious roles. For one of serious roles, <laughs> you know, one of those, uh, you'll see me on powder in a few years or something like that. The sequel. Um, so now, uh, let's talk about, like, where your career's gone. Like, you've done a, you were in the Cheetah Girls. <laughs> what did you do with that? I haven't seen. I only saw the second one. I'm like, I like this movie, but I never saw the original one. Oh, what is Raven Simone? Girls too. I watched Here because <laughs> sometimes you're just gonna put on the Family Channel. They got some good stuff. What's Raven Simone really like? Is she really that so Raven? She's really that so Raven. Yes, <laughs> she is. She's uh, Raven was cool, man. All the, all those girls on that show were kind of cool. Yeah. But they're also, you know, they've been doing it for so long. Yeah. They kind of had uh, the. The professional attitude to go along with it so yeah they were all they were all very cool yeah um you're also the the show in the states is on the life <laughs> the show in the states is on the lifetime network um what is that like being part of because you know you when, when i think of the lifetime from what i know about it we don't get it here in canada mm -hmm. it's always like the woman in peril movies with like you know meredith baxter bernie <laughs> yeah. valerie bertinelli so now how does your show fit into that and how are you being received by people out there um well, I mean, it, Life, Lifetime's a women's network, yeah. and um, I mean, majority of their viewers are women, so um, our show fits into that category as Victoria Nelson, Christina Cox, being this extremely strong, empowered woman who's um, ethically and mentally so stable and strong, which actually, that's, that's my attraction to her, is, you know, it's hard to, for me to meet so many women throughout a lifetime, and, you know, I tell her at one point in uh, the first or second 
episode that you know I haven't met somebody like you in a long time, and that's that that mental stability and that I call it stubbornness, but you know it's it's her it's her strength, and um, I think that empowers women in in the states and and up here, and I think uh, you know she she portrays that well that that's so well in the show. So, um, as a vampire, uh, are there some kind of catchphrases that you find that you use in your character to maybe uh, to talk to these strong women? I want to suck your blood. Do you really say that in the no. show? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Um, no, I mean, the the eyes kind of you know uh, di dilate. My my, I, you know, there's a kind of a strong whisper, and um, you know, everything's very uh, when I kind of seduce women or whatnot to get get what I want from them or or other people. Um, it's it's very. It's suggestive. It's mm -hmm. you know what what I say is what they think that they should be doing in the end, and um, you know it's it's a slight whisper. They add a little uh, they have a little voiceover trick that they use, and um, and uh, the eyes come out, and sometimes the teeth pop out, and a little bit of intimidation. Uh, so like, is there a certain like body style that you have to like get into to be like I'm a vampire now? What do you do? How do you stand as your character? Um, very strong, yeah. very um, uh, very straight, very poised. Um, I mean, he's, he's the bastard son of Henry VIII. Mm -hmm. He's 450 years old. He's royalty. And um, all of his mannerisms, all of his, um, uh, the way he walks, the way he talks, the, um, the way he delivers is, is very, very poised and very royal. And um, that's something I just got from, you know, watching, you know, movies like The Queen and, and everything like that, just doing research. And, and um, you know older vampire movies, and I took little things from all those, those those genre movies, and then things that I wanted to create myself because it's never fun walking in and creating a character like a vampire, which is what done so many times, yeah. and doing the exact same thing. And you know it's it's about creating something different. So. So how do you go about practicing that? Like you know before you show up on set, and you're like you know what I gotta get the I gotta get the neck bite down. Like what? <laughs> you're like hey lady, you wanna well um, <laughs> scene study? What's going on? <laughs> you know Amy, our publicist, has been bugging me to bite her neck for. Oh! A couple of weeks now, so uh, <laughs> she's standing there shaking her head like no, I wasn't. She's shaking, but she's uh, reading. Yeah. <laughs> she's shaking, and her knees are shaking too. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> um, no, I mean, uh, we we got to, we got to rehearse, and um, you know, over the first couple of weeks, I mean, we had some screen tests and uh, uh, some wardrobe tests and everything, and. Um, the first few scenes, you know, you're nervous. You're like, oh my gosh, how is this going to turn out? Is yeah. it going to look good or what? And, you know, our first director, um, uh, Alan Croker, who was, um, became a very good friend of mine, was, was very open and very relaxed on set, which made it a very easy environment to step in and, and have the, the time to create something new and, and genuine and different. So. so when you have that character, that, that, that persona down pat, do you ever, like, go out in, like, the clubs and you, like, put that on to, like, to... Pick up the you know ladies. How many times we joked about that? Oh, really? Rolling out to a club with like the fangs and the eyes and like <laughs> the wardrobe and just having somebody with a little video camera in the back just to see if the whole suggestive thing might actually work yeah. on somebody. Like, you want to go home with me? <laughs> stare, that long stare. And then we never really did it. But really? It would have been funny to yeah, see. Yeah, right? like, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, what? <laughs> or then some freaky lady would be like, "Yeah, I want some of that." And you're yeah, like, right? "You know what? I don't." Bye. <laughs> we did this one. Well, we did this one scene in this this rock bar in a uh, underground bar in in Vancouver, and um, they had they had a bunch of extras that were told to come dressed, you know, gothic or whatnot. Yeah. And I guess they had heard that it was a vampire show, so a bunch of them showed up with like fangs and glowing the dark fangs and like like blood blood and everything like that yeah. and they had all done wicked they did a great they did a great job in their own makeup and their wardrobe and everything but it was kind of freaky because like <laughs> i'm the actor and these everybody else seemed just like real people and to them i don't know if i seemed like a real person and they were just acting in the background so yeah you know what was it i don't know so when you were in vancouver now the show okay the show was filmed in vancouver but takes place in toronto yeah how did vancouver do as it as posing for toronto um, our exteriors were were picked and chosen very carefully, and um, you know we had a, a great DP, uh, Danny Novak, who went on all the scouts with everybody, and a fantastic art department that um, and a set deck designer um, that was um, Andy Deskin, who was awesome, that um, really really made sure that it didn't give anything away or, or take away from the show at all, and you know. Um, Toronto is fantastic. There's so many different parts of Toronto that are that are old and new, and you know have so much ethnic di ethnic diversity that it in almost any in any city in the world you could turn around some alley and be like this is Toronto, and you could be in New York and turn around and be like this is Toronto. 